What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris, this is 4K Motoring, and today we're gonna go through the ride modes on the 2021 and up Ducati Multistrada V4S, just to let you guys know what this bike is capable of, what the changes do, and really how many changes are possible in this bike. I'll let you know my favorite settings. Let's get to it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn the bike ignition on. We're not gonna start the motor, we have our kill switch off. But we can see as the menu comes up, we need fuel. But we've got the upper and lower menus. To switch between the two, you can see how there's a light highlight around that right now. To switch to the bottom one, we're gonna hold our toggle switch down, and we'll see how the white highlight switch to the bottom one. So you can search through all the menus there. To reset your trip odometers, make sure the trip that you want is up. You're just gonna click and hold the button here. It'll say reset trip to info. You can click yes or no and pretty easily go forward from there. To go through our ride modes, we're gonna hit our selector switch. Everything pretty well is being done by this joystick here. We're gonna hold up and go back to our top menu. And we have a couple ways to get through our ride modes. For normal riding, all we're gonna do is hit our mode button right there, and that's gonna bring us into our mode menu. From there, we can use our joystick to go up and down, and our selections are touring, sport, urban, and enduro. Those are our four ride modes on the V4S, not the Rally or the Pikes Peak, just the V4S, they do change on the other two, I believe. But in our current configuration, we can see when we have one selected, we have a list of exactly what settings are chosen for each one. And I'll kind of quickly go through each mode. You can pause it if you want to look at which modes I've selected, just to see what I have for each setting. Urban, I have basically taken to be more of a rain mode than I have truly in a round town mode. but those are the modes. Once you find one you like, you can go ahead and click your joystick. It will flash just to confirm your selection and it will switch to it. Now to do this while riding, this is something you can do on the fly, but you can't be actively on the throttle or on the brake. So it has to be while you're cruising, either on cruise control or just kind of coasting or a complete stop. You can go ahead and change these settings. It will tell you right here in the center of the screen what mode you're in, whether touring, sport, urban, or enduro. And it also tells us your suspension mode, which will be this top button, the suspension button. And that'll bring us into a similar menu. This bike has an auto load leveling setting, which I keep it in most of the time. But you can select just like the earlier version, rider, rider and luggage, rider and passenger, rider and passenger and luggage, or auto. And that will also be displayed right here. If you press and hold this suspension button, it'll switch us to our minimum suspension mode, which will switch back out after you exceed about 60 miles an hour or when you press the button again, but that makes it a little bit easier when you come to a stoplight or sitting in traffic to drop the bike down a little bit. Now to customize each mode, because there's a ton of customization available in each of these riding modes, so you can make it exactly what you want it to be. And Ducati's done a great job with this. The electronics on these bikes through all the generations of Multistradas have become phenomenal and this V4S is no different. Every update, it becomes even better. The stuff that you can do, you can really make this bike your own. So let's go through, now that you've seen kind of all the settings that I use, I'll just go through how to set each one of these up and let you know what they do. So yes, I know there's a little bit of a glare, but we're gonna try and go through this the best we can. So again, we're gonna stay in this top setting and hit our setting menu into riding mode. And from here we have, again, that same list of riding modes we did earlier that we can select. So we'll start with something like sport because I think that's the easiest for people to rationalize what exactly you're looking for. And when we go in, we have this pretty cool graphic. We're gonna go and go through each setting just to see what it does. So engine is the first one we have. And the options we have are high, medium, and low. If we can look, I'll zoom in just a little bit for you. 
So we have a little gauge here, which is going to tell us what each mode does. So on high, we're showing that we have full power and dynamic throttle response. So we have two graphs, power and throttle response are there. So high, we have full power and dynamic throttle. Medium, we're going to have full power available, so a full 170 horsepower on full throttle, but a smoother throttle response or kind of less linear. It really kind of ramps up towards the end and is a little bit more forgiving down low. And then our low power, which keeps that smooth throttle input, that kind of slow to begin high ramping up throttle, but with a reduced total power, I believe somewhere around 115 horsepower is all we're going to get with this bike. Now we're going to go down to Ducati Traction Control, DCC. And this is pretty cool because it shows you what part of the bike we're affecting by each one. So it highlights the rear wheel because that's where our traction control is really setting in. So we have currently in setting four, but we have up to eight levels of traction control. And we can see we still adopt our two graph system. Our top goes off-road, road, and wet. Our bottom goes from performance to safe and stable. And as we go through these different levels, it kind of changes each one. So for the full level eight trash control, it's showing we're safe and stable for wet conditions. That's what it's really meant for. As we start dropping down, seven is wet conditions, but performance in the wet. Six, we go to our normal road setting, and that's for varying traction conditions, but still uh, not really wet or off-road. It's still meant for the road. And we go from safe and stable progressively towards performance in road mode, up to number three, now we're in road performance. As we hit number two for traction control, now we're in our off-road setting. So this is really for the enduro mode, something that you're not gonna have traction, so instead of just making the bike stay in one place, it acknowledges the rear wheel is going to spin in order for you to move. So we go to off-road and safe and stable. And then level one is performance. Or you can fully turn the system off. Most of these modes, most of these electronic nannies, you can totally turn off if you want to. This bike is an absolute monster. I'm not sure I'd recommend it, but you can. So we'll go back up. And four is where mine was setting. So on road, slightly towards performance, not all the way just a little bit of you know, reserve riding. I ride in sport most of the time, just for the throttle response and the suspension setup, but it is on the road, so I like to have a little bit of safeguard to keep me from doing anything too stupid myself. Next we have our ABS setting, and we can see our front wheel is highlighted. And now we have a red outline of the brakes, the front and rear brakes, and the quartering IMU sign, we have three levels of ABS. Now, two graph system, off-road and road, and safe, stable, and performance, kind of on opposite sides they were on the last time. But in level three, this is meant for road, safe, and stable. So being on the road, being safe and stable, this is a more aggressive for the bike setting to intervene on your behalf. And this system works so well. If you're setting up a rain mode or something like that, it is impressive what this bike does. Even my last 2015 with this IMU cornering ABS system, it has saved me and made the bike just so much more predictable so often. It is an outstanding safety feature. But we see in three, we're in road safe and stable. In two, we're in road performance. And one, we're off-road performance. And that is only activating the front ABS. There is no rear ABS in mode one. Road two and three, you're still getting front and rear ABS and cornering ABS. Down to our wheelie control. This is a pretty cool system that is a very smooth, not overly invasive system. It doesn't just automatically cut everything. It kind of brings you back down level um, pretty easily. There are again nine modes with just one graph from performance to safe and stable. Nine modes and an off. And you can just see progressively how much force, how aggressively this is keeping that front wheel on the ground. This is a system that controls both how high it gets off the ground and how quickly it gets off the ground. So you'll see we had ours at level two, definitely keep it on the ground. Level one is really just keeping you from fully 12 o'clock in the bike. It doesn't do a whole lot else for you. The higher you go, you can kind of act as a launch mode almost. It keeps the front wheel on the ground, it really balances you know, your rise versus your acceleration. So between two and three is really where I like to keep that. 
If I have passengers, so if I'm usually riding with a passenger, I have the suspension set up for passenger mode. I usually stay in touring, I don't go too aggressive, but I like to keep this a little bit more aggressive on the wheelie control because that extra weight towards the back really makes the bike wanna come up pretty quickly. So I do have a more aggressive setting in touring just for that two up ability. All right, down to our quick shifter. Quick shifter just has two modes, on and off. Quick shifter works really well on this bike. It's both up shift and down shift capable. It is pretty smooth in pretty much every condition. Uh, some of the lower gears right at low throttle or sometimes a little bit jerky, but for the most part, it is a very smooth system. I just leave it on all the time. Uh, I'm sure that some people out there have, have reasons to turn it off. I don't like it turned off. I like just to keep it on. It's been pretty awesome, like a semi-automatic sort of transmission. It's been pretty cool. Our suspension gets pretty complicated on this bike. So we can select our front and rear independently here. And now we are still, mind you, in the sport setting is what we're, we're talking about here. So let's select the front. And again, we can kind of see a graph system here from softest to hardest are our options and a little gauge that shows comfort and performance where we are. This allows you to pretty well vary what kind of feeling you want in the front end. And we'll keep this a little towards hard, not hardest. The spring rates on this bike are definitely a little bit stiffer than the older Multistrada variants, the 1260 and 1200s. Keep that in mind. But for our sport setting, we'll keep it in hard. This is not for the preload, this is just for the damping control on the semi-active skyhook suspension. So if we go back to our front rear selection, we'll now select rear. And this one, yes, we get a preload adjustment. That's in our a different menu. But this is just for the damping control is really all this suspension setup is for. And again, hardest to softest, comfort to performance. We can pretty well go through everything to set it up the way we want it. And back, back one more time. Preload is where we're gonna set up just the rear preload. This is really for the weight of the bike and the weight of the rider and luggage. Again, there are a couple modes. What I always do is do the automatic mode so I don't necessarily go through this a whole lot. What you basically do here is set up your range. If you have just a single rider, you can set up your preload setting. It goes all the way up to 24 is the highest preload, and this is all based on weight with the electronic rear preload, and you can drop it down pretty heavily. Okay, so we were at, for just the rider, we were at 16, which is a little high. Let's bring it down to 14. Since we upped the damping, we'll decrease that a little bit. All right, our rider and passenger our rider and luggage is here. So we're adding a little bit of weight. We'll go up to 16 for that. We'll start somewhere. If we're starting at 12, starting at 14, we'll go up two for each mode. Rider and passenger is probably the biggest thing. So we'll go up to 20 for that. And rider, passenger, luggage, we're all the way up. So just to give you an idea of where they're gonna sit with the auto load, leveling of this bike, it'll do all this automatically. But if you wanna have a little bit more customizability to set exactly what you want, you can customize each load. And then of course, you can set it back to default, turn it to the default settings for this ride mode, and basically clear up anything that you may have done if you don't like the way it ends up riding or you bought a bike secondhand, you can start from Ducati factory settings and just tweak it a little bit from there. So I did speak to the technical director of Ducati North America about this bike just a little bit over the phone. His name is Richard Kenton. Uh, he works for Ducati North America as the technical director and asked a couple questions about our software capability and kind of expectations in the future of the Multistrada V4S now in December of 2022. What I was told, this bike is totally up to date. I've done all the updates. There are every two weeks to a month, there is another update available, something for this bike, usually very small tweaks that they're doing for any sort of bug that they're working on, any sort of feature capability that they're doing. But every couple weeks, really, there's some sort of update available for these bikes. One of the 
eight different CPUs on these bikes. And what he could tell me is the biggest update everybody's gonna notice is the one that came out at the beginning of 2022 for the 2022 Multistrada. All you 2021 owners probably got this update as well. That's the one that gave you the minimum preload setting and allowed the heated grips to be activated by the buttons and done some of the different menu items for you. That was the biggest overall update. They've done some little things in some of the recent updates like making the refresh rate of some of the tachometer settings a little bit faster or things a little bit more accurate with the gear setting notification. Just stuff like that, stuff you may not notice. There's been some constant updates with the connectivity settings for the Ducati Connect. Again, not really a great system in my opinion. It is not where it needs to be, not anything comparable to the automotive systems or Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, any of the background stuff. So they're still working through that and they know there's problems, they know there's complaints. It's an issue more with Bosch and the system that they're using that they're having to work through multiple different vendors to try and get this stuff stabilized. It's not just in-house Ducati, but they are working on it. One of the biggest questions I did ask him was regarding the new V4 Rally that's come out, the cylinder deactivation, the extended cylinder deactivation into actually riding for fuel consumption purposes. Is that going to come to the V4 and how much does that actually matter? What he told me is that he's getting ready to go to Ducati Italy in a couple weeks to do training on that V4 rally to really talk to them and ask all those questions. He's gonna give me a call when he gets back after he learns these things. But what he told me is that we can expect and what is typical of Ducati, what they aim to do is any new model that comes out, whatever the bike is in the Ducati family, any new bike that comes out that has a new feature, their goal is within six months to bring that feature to all the other bikes that have the hardware that's able to support that. So what that really means to me is if this system on the V4 Rally comes out and it's using the exact same motors, cylinder deactivation, sensors, everything that the V4S already has, if the V4 Rally has that and it's proved beneficial, that is something that they will then, within six months or so, make available to the V4, not just the Rally, but all the models, and that might get our highway, either urban mileage or highway mileage up just a little bit on this bike to make it just a little bit more fuel friendly and to be able to go just a little bit farther on one tank of fuel. This video was made by request. I did have a request to go through the menu modes on this bike. Again, I'll show you the settings that I use when I ride my bike and how to change the settings, what different settings you have and options on this bike. Like I said, truly customizable bike. This is the Swiss Army knife of motorcycles in my opinion. It is a Jekyll and Hyde sort of bike. It brings 170 horsepower in an adventure bike. And this bike, trust me, it has no business being this fast already. All the way through to a comfortable two up long distance touring bike to a wet weather off-road capable bike. It is amazing what you're able to do with this one motorcycle. And that is one of the things I love about the Multistrada. I do want to thank you guys for watching the channel. Again, I'm Chris, this is 4K Motoring. We do have some more big changes coming up for the Multistrada this year. I've already ordered the full Acura exhaust for the bike, so I'm gonna go through the actual installation, which I'm gonna do myself. I'm gonna get some sound tests before and after just to give you some real objective evidence on what that exhaust really does, and I'll go ahead and get the tune done as well. I'll keep you guys posted. If there's any specific questions you guys have about the bike or anything you wanna see, feel free to ask, leave it down in the comments or send me a message. I'll do my best to bring the video to you and answer that information. Otherwise, thanks for watching 4K Motoring. We'll catch you next time.